All right, so let's look at a couple of examples of how we can interpret the correlation coefficient. So once we do the calculation using technology and we get that R value, how do we interpret that? So remember, the correlation coefficient tells us the strength and direction of a linear relationship. So I have three examples here. The first example is looking at the relationship between calories and sodium in a sample of hot dog brands. And that correlation coefficient was found to be 0 0.94. So explain what this means about the relationship between the calorie count and the amount of sodium. So first off, we can say that there is a strong positive linear relationship because 0.94 is very close to that positive one. It falls between 0.7 and 1. So there is a strong positive linear relationship. Um, and then we can also say that as the calories increase, no, the amount of sodium. I would say the amount of sodium is our X and the number of calories is our Y because the calories aren't going to change how much sodium you put in the hot dog. The sodium is going to change how many calories are in the hot dog. So as the amount of sodium increases, the calories increase because it's a positive relationship. If this was a negative relationship, if we had a negative correlation coefficient, then the sodium increasing would cause the calories to decrease. So there's one example. So now, second example, we have a relationship between the cost of a Chevy vehicle and the gas mileage. And that relationship was found to be 0.647. So explain what this means in terms of the variables. So if we see something that wants us to explain it in terms of the variables, you have to mention the variables in that explanation. If you don't mention the variables, then you aren't doing what's being asked. You aren't explaining it. And then we're looking at the cost of a Chevy vehicle in relation to the gas mileage. So again, is the cost going to affect the gas mileage or is the gas mileage going to affect the cost? I would say that the gas mileage is going to affect the cost of the vehicle. So here we have 0.647. So now we have a moderate positive linear relationship so as the gas mileage increases here I am explaining it in terms of the variable so as the gas mileage increases the cost Again, this is positive, so the cost is also increasing. So the cost increases as the gas mileage increases. Those may be backwards. It may be cost affects gas mileage. I'm not sure that one could go either way. If I had the data, it would help me see this better, right? So we wanna make sure we have complete pictures. These are just little snapshots we can make, which can make it a little more difficult. All right, and then our last one, the correlation coefficient for the relationship between shoe size and the number of books read was found to be 0.002. So we're looking at shoe size and how many books a person read. So I would say they were looking to see if shoe size changes how much they read. And that correlation coefficient is a very small number, very close to zero. So explain what this means in terms of the variables. So there is a, I would call this a very weak 
almost no linear relationship because it's so close to zero. between the shoe size and the number of books read. And because this relationship is so weak, it's so close to zero, it's in that orange range from our picture of these, I would not even dare to say that the shoe size increasing causes the number of books to read to increase. Yes, it is positive, but it's such a weak relationship that I'm not even going to go there. Okay, I'm just going to say it's a very weak, almost no linear relationship because that correlation coefficient is so close to zero. If it was a little bit closer to that 0.3, I might write a statement like that saying that, you know, as the shoe size increases, the number of books read increase, but I'd still be wary because it's in that weak range. Okay. So here are some examples of how we want to be interpreting the correlation coefficient, especially when we're being asked to interpret it in terms of the variables. So part of the interpretation is looking at, is it strong, moderate, weak? Is it positive or negative? But then we also want to state what's happening to the response variable as the explanatory variable increases. And in this case, these were all positive ones. You could have negative ones though. 